The Bodeli Depression is an area at the edge of the southern Sahara and is thought to be the dustiest place on earth. Now, about 50,000 years ago, the area was the site of a mega lake covering about 2 million square kilometres. 4,000 years ago, it covered about 1 million square kilometres, and now all that's left is a rapidly shrinking Lake Chad. Just over 50 years ago, Lake Chad occupied an area of 25,000 square kilometres. Now that's down to 1,500. However, though the shrinking lake and dust may not be good for Chad, it may have surprising benefits for South America, indicating just how interconnected our world really is. The shrinking of the lake doesn't mean that it's doomed to permanently disappear, as it's undergone shrinkage and expansion before. It probably actually dried up about 20,000 years ago, and even at the start of the 20th century, Lake Chad wasn't much more than an area of marshland. But because the whole area once was a lake bottom, the dust of the depression has some rather unusual properties. Growing in the lake were a vast amount of unicellular phytoplankton called diatoms, which are almost invisible to the naked eye, but they can clump together to form more visible colonies. When these diatoms died, they sank to the bottom of the lake and created a sedimentary layer which now makes up the vast majority of the dust that is generated in the area. This dust is rich in iron, phosphorus and other minerals which plants need to grow and flourish. Whilst this dust may not be great for enriching your garden, it is very useful for enriching the limited soils of the Amazon Basin. This is because the vast amount of the rain which falls in the rainforest means that most of the nutrients in the soil are flushed straight into the Atlantic Ocean before they can be absorbed by the plant life around the Amazon. The only problem then is how to get all this dust from Western Africa to South America. Thankfully, rather than having to transport shiploads of this across the ocean, the wind does this job for us instead. It's probable that over the last 1,000 years, a 4 metre layer of dust which was lying at the base of the Delhi Depression has been removed. It was stirred up and carried into the atmosphere. Then, the prevailing winds, it's thought that nearly a fifth of the dust made it across the Atlantic to fall again with the rain, a daily dust fall of over 100,000 tons. The good news for the Amazon is that there's still a great deal more of this dust remaining, probably over 1,000 years worth. An interesting question however occurs, we start to think about what may happen to that region of Africa in the future. If the area continues to become drier, the amount of dust liberated will continue and may even increase in volume. If it does turn, any increase in the fertility of the Amazon Basin as a result may help mitigate some of the damage done to the rainforest. However, if again the area becomes wetter, the amount of dust making it into the atmosphere and then crossing the Atlantic will decrease. As a result, so will the fertility of the region. There may be another more direct influence on our climate as well. That the more dust there is in our atmosphere, less sunlight reaches the surface of the Earth, reducing the impact of global warming, so that the result of global warming is to make Western Africa drier, the result might liberate more dust in the atmosphere, it's possible that increased dust may help to rebalance the system. We cannot know for sure. There we have a quick look at the dust of the Bedelli Depression, a nightmare for those trying to live in the region, an essential nutrient for the Amazon Basin, and an illustration of how interconnected our world 